Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. So my name is Virginius Sinkevichus. This is the hardest part of my presentation, which you have to remember. The rest is going to be quite easy. Um, glad to see you all here. It reminds me, uh, before becoming a commissioner responsible for uh, environment, oceans, and fisheries, I was a minister for economy and innovation back in Lithuania, sort of started all that SMEs movement. So it's also this day very close to my heart, what we're doing, and we definitely, it's someone in the breakfast said it's a drop in the ocean. I can assure you it's a small drop, but it's just the first step. This is the wrong presentation, <laughs> and this one is the right presentation. I've been to so many events, they organized well, but uh, presentation is something always gets stuck. So if you have ideas, something to improve with the presentation, pitch it, I think it will go very well. So, as you know, me, together with my colleagues, we launched an initiative, a huge initiative, which is called the European Green Deal, and it has a huge aim decarbonize Europe by 2050. I think it's, first of all, it's very meaningful. You can make money, but on the same, uh, on the same hand, you can do something which impacts an, uh, a planet and do, does a powerful, positive impact on the health of your children, your grandchildren. Uh, it saves the planet. It saves the species, it saves the beauty of the planet, and more important, you can make money out of it. Uh, this initiative, it has everything what it takes for you to catch that wanted unicorn. Uh, as a minister, I always dreamed that Lithuania would have its first unicorn, and we had one, actually, and it's sustainable, and it's in... Uh, it's in closing industry, which I'm extremely proud. I hope that today, with those pitches, which were going to be given to you, you will catch your own unicorn as well. So, why do we need a green deal? Very simple. First of all, start with harder word, a biodiversity. Biodiversity is inextinct. A one million species, if we continue business as usual, will extinct and it's never happened before. It's all caused purely by human activities. If you say mm, biodiversity is far away from me, I have nothing to do with it, there is 400,000 deaths. 400 EU citizens we lose every year due to air quality in our cities and our member states. That's quite a lot. I'm coming from member states where it's only 3 million population in total. Plastic pollution. Plastic we meet every day. Microplastics are everywhere. Microplastics are in air we breathe. Microplastics are in us. And that number, 74,000, it's the actually plastic ingested each year by each of us. It's huge numbers which definitely we, together with you, can solve. So how do we do it? First of all, of course, if you're serious, you have to shift your funding to those aims you're trying to reach. And uh, EU is serious. We offer one trillion investments into solving the Green Deal puzzle. 25% of that will come from EU budget purely, member states budget and EU budget. Uh, European Investment Bank is going to become a climate bank, which half of its funding is going to be devoted to fund projects devoted to climate change. Definitely that's not enough. We're going to need you on board, private investors, who believe in those who later on going to be pitched their ideas and who have a vision. We can also sponsor your vision. R&D is always a key to solution. 35% of Horizon Europe envelope, so 35 billion in seven years period, will be devoted to climate solutions. And of course, what's most important piece in the puzzle is regulation. Regulation is going to be the one 
showing that we are serious, not only investing, but having a systemic approach here in the EU. And that's going to touch upon every sector, agriculture, energy, transport, you name it. What's there for you? Uh, I have a great news. Green without blue is only yellow. So blue economy is, I think, one of the best kept secrets actually here in Brussels in general. Still with the enormous potential to come. And it all begins with the energy. I already told you that by 2050 we plan to have 35% uh, of our uh, electricity provided from oceans. There is lots of solutions to that to offer. Uh, aqua, uh, when we speak about our food with the growing population, it's very clear. Oceans provide food which is much lower carbon footprint. Finally, uh, biotech, if we look into life sciences, that's enormous potential, enormous amounts of money. And oceans, they have a solutions in not only improving people's health, but in cosmetics, in other sectors where they still not properly research, and those 35 billion can come in handy. So what I would like today from you, I would like to line up your investments, listen to those 20 pitches which are going to be here. We are going to support you with additional 75 million. Yes, it's a drop in the ocean, but let's start with a small drop to reach a huge Green Deal aim in 2050. Thank you very much. Commissioner, I'm, I'm going to ask you, uh, there was a, a couple of questions that probably sort yeah. of jumped out, I, I suspect, quite a lot of our audience, which is, this is great. You're clearly passionate about this, clearly great intentions, but you know, our audience will know, the knock-on effect of a scheme like this will be economic damage to other sectors, loss of jobs. How do you confront that issue? Okay. So, <clears throat> first of all, I would say that we can't take a Green Deal as a zero-sum game. It's not about someone uh, getting everything and someone losing everything. Yes, it's about the transition. But clearly, inaction will cost us much more than action. Inaction, a year, can cause us around 190 billion. 2.2 million people uh, due to climate change can be migrating from uh, places they used to live, they created the, 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 their, their communities, they live with their families. So clearly inaction already causes us much more. And it's, if you would say that, you know, oh, you is naive and the first one is going ahead, I would say that's also about the competitiveness of our companies. We need to be those coming with the solutions which are going to solve tomorrow's problems rather than with the past solutions which are going to be unfortunately dead very soon. And then we talk about jobs. This is the part where those new jobs are going to be created. With the Just Transition Fund, we'll make sure that nobody is left behind and everyone is bored, counting poorest regions in the EU and the richest one. And you're talking also here about a time frame of 20, 25, maybe 30 years to counteract the effects of centuries. Is that realistic? That's more than realistic. I'm coming from a member state which 30 years ago was uh, part of the bloc where nobody could leave. And today, people enjoying a single currency together with uh, people in Paris, people enjoy traveling across the borders, and it's all created in this fantastic place, European Union. Uh, that's a little bit too late, I know to British people to see that, but, <laughs> uh, but speaking about 25, 30 years, uh, this thing, phone, social networks, 25, 30 years ago, nobody was there. Now everyone spends an average two and a half hours a day there. 
if you speak about the solutions, uh, General Electric was the first one coming uh, uh, 25 years ago with a solution on electric vehicles, which they recalled. Today, everyone is going that way. Tesla has a market of roughly 82 billion, I think, uh, sales, and uh, all the major car producers are going that way. So one generation, 25, 30 years, is huge time to something shift dramatically. Of course, as I said at, the, at, the, at my presentation, it has to be systemic. It cannot be only a topic which belongs to Commissioner for Environment. It has to be systemic. It has to be overarching and mirrored in every policy area. Only then, working together as a team, we can reach that goal.